Good evening, everybody, and you're very welcome to Kildalton College and to the Agricultural Virtual Open Day. My name is Tim Ashmore, College Principal, and together with my colleagues, we put together an action-packed agenda for you tonight, in which we'll be reporting from the farm enterprises, and in the studio, we have a panel discussion in which we'll answer any questions that you might have. We look forward to engaging with you over the next hour. You're very welcome to our live studio here in Kildalton College in Kilkenny, which is the largest college in the Chagas network. In excess of 1,400 students a year pass through Kildalton uh, studying courses in equine, horticulture and agriculture. This tonight, of course, we're focusing on agriculture for this virtual open day. And it'll be a mixture of panel discussion uh, interspersed with video footage of the different enterprises here in the college. Um, I just encourage you to um, start posting your questions straight away so we can get through as many as we can tonight. There's a question and answers tab down the bottom of your screen. So please submit your, your questions through that and not through the, the, the chat tab at the bottom. Okay, so at this stage, I want to introduce my panelists. I have uh, James Ryan here, who's the Assistant Principal for Agriculture. I have Joe Day, who's a livestock lecturer in the college, and Claire Bambrick, who is a crops lecturer in the college. So I might just start by, by getting them just to introduce themselves in a, in a few lines. Thanks, Tim. Uh, my name is James Ryan, as Tim already said. I'm the Agriculture Assistant Principal here in the college. Um, from a farming background in Tipperary, um, for the last two years, I'm currently the Assistant Principal in Agriculture, and before that was the Dairy Lecturer here in Kildalton. Perfect. Thanks, James. Joe? Yeah, and Joe Day is my own name. Um, I would have done some rips spanning with Chagas in uh, months before I came to Kildalton in 2006. I spent a number of years planning with the sheep enterprise here. I have spent more, more recent years at the Suckler Beef Unit with some of my colleagues and um, would teach into the WAT and um, part time and uh, full time CIA courses with uh, some maybe crossover into the sport and social activities for the students as well. That's great. Thanks, Joe. And Claire? Yeah, uh, so Claire Bambrick is my name. Um, I'm a crops lecturer here at the moment in Kildalton. I am from a dry stock farmer background, um, not too far away in South Kilkenny. I suppose I started first in Chagas um, doing a Walsh Fellowship and Masters through Chagas and UCD. Um, my first role in Kildalton was a sheep teacher and now I'm a crops lecturer. Okay, thank you. We're now going to go to the first uh, video of the evening, which is our dairy enterprise. We have a series of these enterprise videos, so we're going to go straight to that now and we'll have a panel discussion afterwards. My name is Alina Pratt and I'm the enterprise manager for the dairy herd here in Kildalton College. Kildalton College runs a herd of 115 hosts and freeze and dries across cows in a compact calving spring calving system with the objective to produce high yields of milk solids per cow and per hectare from a grass-based system using efficient high EVI bred cows. The farm comprises a 50 hectare milking platform with a stocking rate of 2.9 livestock yields per hectare. The dairy unit has a range of facilities such as a 20 unit parlour, 120 cow cubicle shed, a dairy calving shed and excellent handling facilities which students use to complete a range of livestock practical skills. Students in first year who choose to complete the dairy production module gain practical experience each day on the farm through a number of different hands-on skills. These skills include milking the cows in our 20 unit parlour, tail painting cows for the breeding season and completing husbandry skills with the young stock such as dosing and vaccinating animals. Our students get to work with a dairy herd, which is in place in the top 3% of EVI in the country. Cows start calving here the third week of January, with just over 80% of our cows calved in six weeks. This gives students plenty of opportunity to practice skills such as assisting in the calving of cows, handling and managing young calves from birth onwards. Our students also practice using new technologies, such as the use of the BRICS refractometer to measure colostrum quality. Over the last number of years, there's been increased focus on the sustainability of dairy farms. On the dairy platform here, fertilizer is spread using chemical fertilizers such as protected urea. Students learn to spread fertilizer through the chemical fertilizer module, which involves driving a tractor and operating an attached fertilizer spreader. Students that choose to stream into the dairy herd management second year option learn more managerial skills through modules such as applied animal breeding and grass management. In the grass management module, students complete a grass walk of the dairy platform each week in groups of four taking grass measurements of each paddock with the use of technologies such as the plate meter. 
Students work as part of a team as they input these grass measurement results on pasture base. From this, the group make decisions on the meal input for the cows here, timing of fertiliser application and paddock grass allocation for the cows each week. Okay, uh, James, that's a very good overview there from Zerlina. Um, yeah. It's a very high EBI, EBI herd here in Kildalston. It's top 3%, I think. Yeah, Tim, it's the <clears throat> top 3% of herds in the country based on EBI. And furthermore, the top 10 cows in the herd have, uh, have EBIs that place them in the top 2% of herds in the country. So, yeah, very valuable herd. And you saw from the video footage there, um, the herd is uh, it's basically a black and white herd, but we have played around a little bit with crossbreeding. And uh, it's something we try here. We like to try things, and that is all for the students' benefit. So um, other just, just quickly, a few things on the, the herd performance. Currently, we're doing 1.93 kilos of milsalus per cow breeding um, since the middle of April. So basically, we're uh, five, six weeks into breeding, going very well. Non-return rate is quite high at the moment. And uh, everything is going well. Um, grass growth, while struggling a little bit of late with the drought, um, it isn't, isn't, uh, isn't as bad as, as we, we t thought it was initially yeah. after we'd done our grass cover last week. So again, things are going well, and that, uh, that's credit to the management and the students' input into the college here. And, and James, what involvement do students have in the management of that herd, like the level five and the level six? Students? Okay, if we take the level five first, level five dairy is an elective choice. Mm -hmm. So they if they choose, and, and predominantly 80% of our first year intake are choosing the dairy option. So they, uh, they're they very much involved in learning the basics of grass measurement, of uh, silage production, um, and also the, the whole basis of producing enough silage. So measuring silage pits, uh, doing the tests on silage, doing tests on the grass, uh, the grass in the field as well. Allocation of grass is very important. That's primarily at level five. Well, if we look at level six, um, these are the students that have a bigger input into the enterprise. So these are the students that are making decisions, they're making bold choices, they're looking at the whole role of increasing EBI in the herd, and the whole role of uh, vaccines as well. And kind of currently they're looking at, and for the last few years they've been looking at growing that herd, looking at how they can maybe turn um, a, a, a platform for maybe a dry stock at home into a, into a current dairy herd. So there's, there's loads of opportunity, and that's primarily based at level six, so again, it's, it's a full-on course, particularly in level six, the dairy option. And uh, it's a course that, uh, that, that we have produced top quality students from. And if you look at the, our current FBD student of the year, is a student from the dairy course in Kildoughton. And we've been lucky over the last maybe five years that we've had three of, three of the, uh, over the last five years, we've had the winners. And they've all came from the dairy course in Kildoughton. So that's, it's a good endorsement of the dairy course. Yeah. Thanks, James. James, I want to move on to talk about the Level 5 Certificate in Agriculture, which is the year one course that mm -hmm. most viewers here tonight, tonight are going to look at going into um, in September. Could you talk me through a typical day that, for those students? Okay, so a typical day, Tim, is when the students would start here with their class at, say, quarter past nine. So they, we would have class, and this would be structured class. Um, in, in, a, in a lecture theatre here, and usually our lecture theatre, which albeit it holds 120, is not able to hold all our students we have in first year. So we divide more students into another classroom. So we, uh, we have them in class um, until one o'clock. Then there's obviously there's an hour break. In the afternoon then, they're split into 10 practical groups. Practical group, give around maybe 13, 14 students in each practical group. And they're doing uh, loads of practicals, as I've already covered, they're doing practicals based on dairy, on machinery, on uh, safety, farm accounts, doing uh, certain, an awful lot of students doing an awful lot of uh, practicals on fencing, which is very popular. Stuff that, uh, like plumbing, um, uh, there's loads of stuff there that uh, the students do. So again, these are all organized in practicals. And uh, the practicals run from 2 until 4 p.m. So at that stage, then, uh, their day is effectively over. So if you look at a brief synopsis of the day, 9, 9.15 until 4 o'clock, and the whole afternoon is dedicated to practicals. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's roughly 50-50 between practicals Absolutely and theory. Yeah. So it's, it's a yeah. very practical course. It's, it's very different to school in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult in school. And the big difference is you're actually studying what you want to do. Whereas in school, you actually had to take your six or your seven subjects for your leaving cert. Here you're basically doing uh, a stuff that's interesting. And obviously all the 130 students that came into first year at level five here last September, and hopefully we'll have a similar number again this year, uh, they are doing a subject that they're enthusiastic about and that they love. And uh, 
we as a staff then are, have the ability to transform or to, to cater for that, uh, that kind of interest they have and to, to make it real. And again, with the ultimate goal of producing these top quality students that are going out uh, as the future farmers um, of Ireland. Good, good. Now, I have a question coming in here, James, and it's, it's what, what sort of practical skills do I need before I, I join the course? Well, first of all, I want to sit to bed the rumour that you have to, or the, the, the notion that you have to be from a, a, a dairy farm or even a farm to join the course. We take students from all uh, walks of life. So if you have an interest, and uh, interest is what we uh, are, are most uh, looking for, we, we want you to, uh, to, have, uh, and to learn the skills here. So we want you to come in uh, knowing that you have an interest and from there we take and we learn the skills. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is a good bit of uh, machinery on it, we would like you to have a provisional license. But uh, other than that, we can teach all the skills that you have. All we want is your enthusiasm and your interest. Yeah, and another question coming in here, like what sort of subject choices do they get in the, in the first year in the level five specific agriculture course? Okay, so every student, Tim, in the place does beef because obviously the, there is a big proportion of the farmers in this country still uh, doing beef production. So uh, there is an elective choice then between dairy, between tillage husbandry and between sheep husbandry and you pick one of those choices. Furthermore to that, you actually have a choice between farm structures, which is already says is your fencing, your plumbing, mm -hmm. Um, setting up a, a grazing platform for your dairy or your beef stock and you also have the option then that is coupled against uh, tractor maintenance which is very important and this is what some people particularly from the tillage side of things they're very interested in the tractor maintenance so you have you have those two options but everyone does farm accounts everyone does farm safety everyone does beef production and so on so again it's a very broad course and again further on in the, the hour we look at uh, pushing that into second year but uh, in first year everyone is doing a very broad spectrum of modules okay um just to say keep the questions coming in on zoom there there there's some great questions coming in there so just the, the q a tab at the bottom of the zoom zoom screen um i have a question in there but i'm gonna i'm gonna park it for a little while and come back to it okay um just another question um that came in is will i have the, the green cert after this course okay um, the Green Cert is a qualification that is given to students once they have completed two years in agriculture college. Two years being a level five, which is one year, and a level six, which is your second year, which is your advanced dairy or advanced dry stock or your advanced machinery course. So you won't have your Green Cert after one year, while you will have your Green Cert after two years, provided you've passed the exams. Just while we're on that, Tim, as well, the benefits of having a Green Cert include uh, the non-payment of stamp duty, on transfer of a farm. Plus, the, as we all know at the moment, and the closing date for TAMS, which is an agricultural grant, is just on top of us. So uh, with that, there is an extra top up for young farmers and that. And there is loads of associated benefits. For instance, stock relief is something that's not really spoken about, but it's a major benefit of having the Green Cert as well. Great, great. James, I knew this question was gonna come in, and I suppose this is the, the, the hard one I'm gonna direct to you. Um, what will, what will the course go ahead in September and, and what would it look like? Okay, straight up, yes, the course is going ahead in September. We're starting here on Monday, the 14th of September. So be no, be no doubt about that, the course starts here in September. What will it look like? Look, we're following government guidelines and we're following government guidelines to the law. And we will refrain from making the decisions, but we can, you can take it anyone that's on this Zoom call at the moment, that it will be a blended course. It'll be a mixture of online, but as, as already stated, 50% of this course is very practically based. We will have you in, albeit you might only be in for a day per week, but you will be in in Kildalton uh, from the 14th of September. And we can do a lot of social distancing in Kildalton because it's a wide area. After all, you said it, your opening remarks is the biggest agricultural college in the place. So we have loads and ample uh, enough space around the place. So we will. If that means instead of you being in a 15 uh, group of students, you may, we may cut that in half. But take it, two points to come out of this. Course starts on the 14th of September and you will be in here for your practicals. Yeah, and, and the fact that they are highly based practical courses Absolutely. and social distancing yeah. is, is not an issue because we have, we have ample practical facilities Absolutely. outside. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. from that point of view, we're in a better position. Yeah, but I think it's important that we need to get the message out and the message is coming clear from both you and me tonight that Kildartan will open for the Certificate in Agriculture Level 5 on the 14th of September. Okay, okay. Another question that's coming in here that I want to deal with. Um, 
can I pick my own farm for the practical learning period? You might say something about the practical learning period and about and answer that question in, in doing so. Okay, Tim, the practical learning period in first year is two months. So it is one month in October, and generally we're looking at going out, give or take, around the second Monday in October for four weeks, and the second period of placement is uh, the month of March, the following year. So if you look at the current year, it will be October 2020 and March 2021. It is four weeks by the two periods. Can you pick your own farm? No, you can't pick your own farm. We have a dedicated placement officer here in the college and we have numerous farms and people actually apply to take our students. So we will allocate a farmer to you uh, based on your experience, based on your knowledge, based on a lot of things that the placement officer puts in place to make a proper match with you. So if you have, uh, for example, a neighbor up the road that you're friendly with, that you've been working and drawn silage with him, you cannot do your placement on his or her farm. Uh, James, there's a question coming in here about learner support, which is okay. something that's very important here in Kildalton. Um, I had learner support in school. Uh, what kind of or what level of learner support can I expect here in Kildalton? Okay, we're in the very fortunate position that we have a dedicated access officer here in the college. We will supply you with the, with the support you had in Leaving Cert. So if that support was a reader and scribe, if that support was a reader, if that support was you uh, get extra grinds, we will supply you with that. So I think we need to get out the message that we will support any student that has learning difficulties. It's not an issue to us for you to have learning difficulties. We embrace you coming into Kadotan with learning difficulties and we will supply that support to you. What we need from that support is you to provide us with a report that you most definitely have given to your secondary school. We need to see that report. But once we get that report, we will uh, be very uh, helpful to supplying you with all the supports you had and will continue to have while in Kildalton. Okay, so when, when will they get in, con con Kildalton get in contact with them about learner support? Okay, once you have applied, and we will be looking at how to apply towards the end of this hour, but uh, once you have applied, the access officer will contact you. And she is in the process for the people that have already applied and up to 30 people. So don't feel that you are isolated. Uh, up to 30 people have already supplied for access support and she is working through those. So don't, uh, don't neglect getting in your report and she will work through. And expect a call from her once you have applied in the next two weeks. Okay, I, I have three questions on Zoom here I just want to clear before we go to the next video clip and it'll be, it'll be the first one for James. Will student accommodation be available for people who are traveling? Okay, uh, as I already said, uh, under social guidelines, we are waiting for kind of an update from the gov government on uh, what, what will happen. Look, at the moment, we have accommodation here for 80-odd students. There is loads of accommodation around the village as well. But we have to take our guidance from the Department of Education and uh, whatever the government come out with, comes out with. So, like, while we have the accommodation, it is a wait-and-see approach at the moment. We are hoping that maybe as we move through the phases and we're just about to enter phase two next Monday, uh, that we will be in a better position to make a decision on um, accommodation near the time. So while I would do, if you are still interested in accommodation and you think uh, accommodation is very important to you if you're living, living a good, bit, a good uh, distance from the college, um, I think you should contact us, make contact with me or Tim and this, or, or, or anyone here uh, on the panel, and uh, we will do our best to guide you. But at the moment, we're taking the Department of, Edu uh, of Education guidelines. But be, be, if things open up and move quicker, we will supply you with accommodation subject to government okay. regulations. Okay, so it's a, it's a movable feast there. Um, Claire, I want to direct this one at you, and, and I know we'll be covering it a bit more later, but what about part-time courses for people who are working during the day? Okay, so the part-time courses um, that we run here in Kildalton, we run them at night time. So they do suit people who are working during the day. There's two nights a week that they must come into Kildalton. Um, when they come in, they'll do practical courses or practical skills outside on the college farm first, mm -hmm. and then they'll also have a theory class in the evenings. So that course in particular is suited to people who are working full time I suppose the only stipulation for it is you must be over 23 to apply you don't need to have any other previous qualifications um, or the leaving cert you just need to be over 23 and come with a willing attitude yeah that's great now we, we will come back to that a, a bit again um, later on um, Joe I'm going to direct this question at you there do I get to choose what type of farm I do my placement on i.e dairy sheep or beef no um, you get to I suppose um, 
have a conversation with the ASIMT officer who will um, take on board what your level of skill is, but it's linked as well to the modules you're doing. So if you're doing the sheep module, um, John would look to place you on a, a sheep farm. So absolutely express an interest, but it's, it's a bit broader than that as such. Um, so uh, as James said, the options would be dairy, um, tillage um, or uh, sheep as the electives. So uh, we usually try and place students on farms that would have predominantly that enterprise as part of their placement. And certainly they come from, as, as James said, a pool of uh, host farmers that are um, I suppose uh, they, they're in ongoing contact with us and they're of a certain standard as well. Yeah, well, I suppose yeah. students are going to do the, the elective. Yeah, that they absolutely. Want to do the same yeah. placement, so it would yeah. be generally the, the farm they want to do it on. And, and James, just before we go to that next video clip, what is the date that we find out if we're accepted on the course? Um, the date depends on when you apply. Mm -hmm. So the minute you apply, you will be offered a provisional place on the course. So uh, the date you apply depends on when you apply. So I, I can't be more clear than that. If you apply, you will get an email back. Uh, by the end of business, say you've been provisionally offered a place and then you need to supply your uh, documentation. Once you supply your documentation and you've cleared the system, you can have your place uh, fully uh, accepted and be offered to you in two weeks. Okay, uh, just to keep the questions coming in, there are some very good questions coming in there. So the tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen and uh, we, we, we'll, we'll answer them after the next video, which is the video on the beef and sheep enterprise. My name is Joe Day and I'm a teacher here in Kildalton Agriculture College. I work mainly in the beef unit. The Kildalton uh, sub-college suckler to beef herd consists of 45 hectare block of grazing ground with a 50 cow suckler herd that is spring calving with all progeny brought either to slaughter or kept as a placement stock. The finished cattle and heifers are mixed grazed with the sheep flock and the overall stocking rate is 2.6 livestock units per hectare. We use a combination of 50% AI and 50% Charlay stock wool and the cows are mainly limousine cross and cemental cross uh, cows. The calving pattern is uh, organized to occur over a 12 week period from the 3rd of January with the first of the cows and calves going to grass in early February. Our first year certificate of agriculture course is very hands on. The students spend four afternoons per week learning and improving practical skills. All students take the beef husbandry module in the first year and they complete 22 practical beef skills throughout the year. These skills range from control and handling of the cattle. Some of the animal health skills involve dosing, injecting, applying porons, um, vaccinations. They also learn skills related to the sale of livestock, such as estimating dirt score, estimating weight, grade, fat score, and skills related to breeding, like body conditions and scoring of cows, during the second year, our students use the suckler beef herd to improve their management skills. For example, they're responsible for the grass measurement and assessing the weekly grass wedge on pasture base. They also examine and suggest changes to the breeding plan and financial performance through using ICBF and the EPROP monitor program. This helps them prepare um, for these skills for recording, analyzing, decision making, and will stand to them in their future careers. My name is Michael Campin, and I'm a sheep enterprise leader at Chagas Kildalton College. The Kildalton Sheep Flock aims to support student learning by demonstrating best practice in the management of a sheep enterprise, focusing on the areas of breeding, nutrition, flock health, financial performance, and sustainability. In first year, our students play a big role in running the sheep flock here in Kildalton and undertake a range of skills from lambing, dosing, foot care, body condition scoring, and many more as part of their sheep production module. When possible, these skills are performed by the students as part of the running of the flock. So students play a big role, particularly around lambing time. Second year students take part in managing the enterprise, making key decisions on grass management, flock health, and pre-lambing nutrition programs. Along with this, students learn a lot of information on managing their own farm business through working with and understanding the Kildalton flock performance figures. Okay, uh, Joe, we got some a great overview there of, of the beef and the sheep enterprise. Um, is there any other beef systems uh, apart from the sucklers in the beef enterprise? Yeah, so we would have uh, traditionally always had a calf to beef unit here, and that's gone up in numbers over the last number of years to 35 uh, males coming off the dairy herd each spring, a predominantly Frisian, Frisian cross, and capable of grading certainly peas, but sometimes O's grade as well. And uh, we bring them through to slaughter 24 months, and they, we have them in a leader follower system there with the previous year's calves, the, the one to two year olds. And it's a very good contrast for the students when they're doing grading skills or assessing animals for slaughter or skills like that. 
Um, so yeah, that's, that's certainly um, a lot, an entry point for a lot of students into building up stock as well. So very valuable enterprise here. Mm. So they'd be typically coming off uh, beef straws in the, in the, in the dairy? In the yeah, dairy there'd be some Angus and limousine news at the end of the breeding season there and it would generate um, a certain amount of uh, crossbred stock for us, but they would be um, predominantly Frisian as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. thanks, Joe. Um, okay, once a student has completed level five, what are his options for level six? Yeah, and as well, that student, um, during level five, we, uh, we I suppose, introduced the fact that, um, that those students will have to make a decision at the end of the year, but it's much better to, I suppose, with the benefit of time, to give them an opportunity to look into it. So we have what uh, James would call an, an options day, where we either get past students in to talk about their choices or maybe run through the, the implications of it. And the three choices that our students would have would be an advanced dairy course, an advanced dry stock course, or an advanced crops and machinery course. So as James alluded to with the advanced dairy, it's very much down to dairy herd management, uh, grass management, breeding, and grazing platform management. The dry stock students would focus then more on um, sheep and uh, suckler management, as well as nutrition, grass and breeding. And the crops and machinery students, which Clear would teach into very much, uh, would look at uh, fabrication. Um, they would look at crop establishment, crop husbandry, as well as... Um, I suppose the, the, the general farm management and environmental modules. So um, probably less than 25% of it common and a real opportunity for students who've done a very broad first year as James outlined, actually specialised then in second year. It's not, I suppose as much as we're outlining modules there, it's important to stress that first year is very much uh, classroom and yard. And um, for second year, there'll be a big emphasis on bringing students on discussion groups quite often to past students who are currently managing farms. And we would have uh, outside speakers come in in some cases. We would bring them to some um, uh, maybe um, businesses or some other places, um, conferences, as well as on some study tours. So a real blended, um, I suppose, a method of imparting information second year. And very much those second year students in the dairy, dry stock and crop machinery um, options would be encouraged to analyze, record and, and make decisions. It's very much doing in, in, in first year the skills, but it's very much deciding and managing in second year. Okay, that's great. But what about the student who wants to go on further than after level six? Is that it or does he have any, any level six progression options? Yeah, that, that, uh, that student who would finish the advanced courses would, would have a choice there and it would possibly come up on your screens there now in the next few seconds where they would progress to the, the, the middle bar there, the, the, the green line, um, where they would have complete advanced dairy, dry stock across the machinery. There would have a number of options open to them. I suppose what is becoming increasingly more popular with students uh, would be the middle and the right hand option where some of the students with or without a dairy background would progress to the UCD professional diploma in dairy management, which would be a two year program through UCD or the middle option, which um, I'd say James up to about 15 students a year, would engage in, in, trying, in looking to transfer into WIT to their degree program in agriculture. Absolutely, and it, Joe, yeah. And I think that we're looking at the fact that we have, uh, we have these linkage with, uh, with the other, with Watford in particular. Um, and I think that the big thing that's coming out of that slide or that, that diagram that's on the screen there is the fact that we can have a 17-year-old here that comes in to do level five and by the time uh, five years later, he can have a level eight degree in agriculture. And uh, I think that, that that's important that we have these links. And quite often that level five come in is looking only at completing level five, probably even level six looks a long way away, but more and more of them, because you're building on building blocks, actually end up progressing to a higher award. And that, that's so true, Joe, the fact that we see him coming in here at maybe 17 year old, just out of leaving cert. And uh, with the intention of just spending one year and the first yeah. months of the place can't wait to get home to their parents. Right. And within, uh, within four years, these are, you know, the future of extension agricultural education, um, you know, in all the professional jobs that the degree gives you, you know, yeah. gives you that option. So I think that that's one of our big pluses that we have here in the college, you know, and it's, it's that linkage with uh, both ourselves and WIT. And maybe uh, we should also recognize the fact that we have that linkage with UCD as well. The fact that we have that uh, through uh, the, the farm managers course and uh, the fact that we, uh, as an industry, are growing dairy farming to, to such an extent that uh, even as we're based here in the southeast of Ireland, uh, the southeast of Ireland has seen rapid growth from uh, maybe five years ago where we had dairy herd size of uh, 60 odd to, to be over 100 uh, dairy herd size farms at the moment. And, we need to supply labor and that course is a ready-made source of labor for, for, uh, for the farmers in this region. Yeah. And so, I, I think we see that every year that people come in at level five, they just want to go to a home farm mm -hmm. and they're coming for the practical, but they, they get that academic bug and they progress up when they can come out with a level seven or a level eight at the end of the chain. I, I think it, it, it's, a, it's, a great, it's great, great to have those progression routes. 
I want to, I want to I move. Do, just a second, Tim. Um, I think we need to, to clarify as well that people that do the dry stock course, uh, they can still do the, the dairy or the dairy yeah, farm managers course. And we've had, we've had the, the winner of the, the overall student uh, from level, that level seven dairy managers course actually was a dry stock right. student. That's right. So right. I think it's important mm -hmm. to recognize that, that, uh, that level of achievement. Very good. James or Joe, I want to come back and ask you about, I mean, life outside of the, the classroom and, and sports and, and, and other activities, because I think it's a very important part of college life. Yeah, I suppose, look, a lot of students and maybe their parents as well that might be listening tonight or would have picked up a prospectus book coming to one of the agricultural colleges might be looking initially at the, at the award and what it might be able to do to them in, for them in the short and medium term. But I suppose ultimately our product are, are, is developed to young people and it's very important that they look outside the curriculum. And I was just thinking there, as James was describing about um, dairy farm management, some of the students would engage in some courses um, to do with DIY AI or additional fabrication that they'll be laid on in the evenings uh, for students. And again, there'll be, I suppose, there'll be the, the core sports such as the intercolleges hurling and football that we partake in um, during the term for level five and level six students. And again, some of the some some staff there would take it upon themselves to run maybe quiz nights for some of the students that would be staying in that wouldn't actually get to go home during the week. So they would have been stock judging in the last few yeah. years. And some of those have progressed on to represent Ireland and France there this past spring at sheep, dairy, and beef competitions. So it is quite diverse, I suppose. A lot of it is driven by what the students are interested in that particular year. Um, but there's there's a willingness there to develop young people as part of an academic program. It's very important. Uh, and I think, Joe, uh, we, we can't let go that the first time in years we've had a ladies' Gaelic football team in the college, which yeah, is, it was, is it was fantastic. Yeah. And um, certainly the last number of years um, at the Inter Colleges um, Competitions Day, um, there will be a strong female, um, I suppose, not just um, grouping within the, the college team, but it will be driven by them a lot yeah. of the time as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's great to have that mix here. I think we would have had 10% of the students here um, female yeah, last absolutely. year, yeah, and it, it was it was one of the highest we had, you know. Yeah. And I think that uh, we embraced that, you know. Yeah, well, it certainly added to. I suppose it, it's reflective of realism. It's reflective of the industry and a growing part of it, and it helps develop young people to be in that environment, as well as mixing with their equine and their horticulture colleagues. Let's yeah, say absolutely. within first year here on the campus. I, I want to just bring you back to the Zoom here. I want to clear some. Of this. There's a lot of great questions coming in here. Okay, um, maybe Claire, you you'll answer this one for me. Do you teach uh, teach about poultry? Um, so while we don't necessarily have a module dedicated solely to poultry here in Kildalton, um, we do cover it in first year. There's a module um, called Principles of Agriculture. So within that module, students get a very um, good overview of the different enterprises in the agriculture sector in Ireland. So they study poultry, pigs, um, fruit production, different horticulture elements. Um, forestry. They do a broad overview of all of the different um, sectors that make up agriculture in Ireland. Okay. Um, James, I'm going to put two questions into one for you here. Is there a deadline for applications and what documents do you need to, uh, to supply when booking a place in a course? Okay, the deadlines for applications is the end of this month. Um, what are the documents you need? Excuse me. You need your passport photo, you need your PPSN documentation, and you need uh, something to show a uh, driver's license or um, birth cert or something like that, yeah. So um, look, um, in the current climate, um, I think uh, if get in your application forms as much as possible, but if, and this, this video will be recorded, and uh, if you're watching this in the month of August and you find that you're still interested, contact me. Okay. Okay, James, I'm going to stay with you on this question here. It's in relation to WIT. Can you explain what happens for students doing the level seven, uh, level eight in WIT and their modules in Kildalton? So briefly, please. Okay, um, if you look at uh, first year, uh, the agriculture in WIT, um, it is in conjunction with us in Kildalton. So you're here four days a week, you're doing all the practically based modules. So your production modules, your dairy production, your beef production, your cereal tillage crop production, that's first year. In second year, you're doing a lot of soil management. You're doing a lot of uh, uh, animal biology. So you're here three days a week in second year. In third year, you're here one day a week where you're doing all your farm business. And in fourth year at your level eight, you're here one day a week as well. And that is kind of a, um, farm management module where we, we teach you how to develop a farm plan for prospective clients uh, if you go down the advisory route. Yeah, yeah. So those students live in Waterford typically and they come out here Absolutely, to do modules. Yeah. And uh, just to say, we also have a bus between both campuses and there's only about 15 kilometres between both campuses. So the bus, just to give you a brief update, the bus uh, is here for about half eight and it, it leaves here again around five o'clock in the evening.
Okay, Joe, again, a brief answer in this one. Um, are we put on placement when doing level six? Yeah, so as James said, in first year, it's, it's uh, eight weeks, but in second year, it'll be 16 weeks placement. Um, and again, the placement officer will look after um, the actual, in conjunction with discussions with you, look after where you go. And more and more, we see them go internationally to um, New Zealand. Um, some of the crops students would have gone to the UK or America or Canada the last few years. But again, it's, it's, it's regulated here for reasons of insurance, um, I suppose the standard of farming, and in terms of, um, I suppose, oversight on the student. Excellent. Um, James, just back to you now. If, if you got an email to say that, uh, that they have reserved you a place uh, after you've applied um, and they're being contacted in July to confirm, does this mean you have a place? Yes. Okay. Um, Claire, do you have a farming sim simulator module? <laughs> that simulator <laughs> was very popular. Um, we had a simulator on trial here. Um, for a while at the start of last year. It was very popular with students. However, what I would say is who needs a simulator when you actually have the facilities here in the college? We have excellent facilities. You'll see in the next video clip that's coming up, yeah. we have um, a dedicated driving pad down the end of the yard where students are out, they're learning, they're honing in on their tractor driving skills and the different skills that are associated with that down on the pad where it's extremely safe and they'll have one-on-one -on -one tuition which you choose sure that down there. Yeah, I suppose, and that just to say that as much as we have um, um, very, very modern fleet tractors there, it's all the way down to maybe like a Massey yeah. 390, where if someone isn't overly technical and wants to start off with the nuts and bolts, it's say there's, there's a tractor there they can feel comfortable on before progressing. Yeah. There's and a tractor to suit everyone, yeah. essentially. It's important as well that we have maybe 20 or 15% of our cohort of students that uh, have, have are, are Quite limited on their tractor driving skills mm -hmm. and like we we do individual one-to-one -one with those so don't feel that because you are limited tractor driving experience that you're excluded from here we we will include you and we will help you and for example last september we would have pulled students and given dedicated time for that to uh, to teach those students so much so that of the 20 that had difficulty driving we got that down maybe to one or two that needed extra support and by the second lot of placement they were all well able to handle the tractor mm -hmm. Okay, I, I have two questions here I want to clear off Zoom before we go to the next video footage. Um, the first one is, um, hi, are there opportunities available for mature students? I think we're going to cover that, Claire, in the next section, so we'll park that yeah. and, and it'll, more questions will spill out of that. Uh, James, will overseas placement be possible in 2020? Um, again, it's, it's very much down to government regulations. Um, and I think we, it, it's, it's a play, play it. we'll, we'll just see what happens. But like... If, if, for example, uh, things calm down, and, and like this is very much me, uh, just think without, with outside gov without government regulations, this is just for, very much me, uh, think of what may happen. Say by your placement in second year of a dairy course or a dry so course, you wouldn't be going until January, January 2021. So, 2021, so yeah. I would expect it, the, the first lot we will be releasing will be January 2021. Okay, okay. So listen, we're going to go to the crops and machinery video now and we're going to come back then and we're going to ask Claire a few questions on that. So keep the questions coming in in the Q&A there. Thank you. Uh, my name is George Goodwin and I'm a machinery and crops lecturer here at Kildalton College. Kildalton has an extensive range of uh, machinery, ranging in sizes from 20 horsepower down in our horticultural unit right up to 200 horsepower, which is used here in our farm uh, operations. Uh, for the tillage enterprise uh, specifically. Our level five and level six students complete practicals every afternoon here in the college where they're involved in tractor driving, chemical and organic fertilizer spreading, uh, agricultural mechanics where they're servicing tractors and so on, and learning about grassland machinery and so on. We have an all-weather driving pad, uh, which allows students to hone their driving skills uh, and we're not plowing up fields in, in wet weather. And that's an exceptionally important asset to have here in the college. Kildalton College runs a very successful advanced machinery and crop management course for many years. Uh, students on the level six uh, course uh, spend a full day per week in the college workshops. Uh, this uh, is split between fabrication and machinery maintenance. For many of the students, this is their favorite day of the week when they're not in the classroom and it's very, very hands-on. They learn to maintain and calibrate, uh, repair machinery during the winter months. And once weather allows, then we're out in the fields uh, setting up plows, um, learning to plow, calibrate seed drills and so on. And it's, as I say, a very, very hands-on and one-to-one -one training uh, on that particular course, which is important uh, for those students. My name is Damien Fior, and I teach tillage crop production here in Kildalton College. 
and I'm also responsible for the tillage enterprise here. One of the main functions of the tillage enterprise is for education purposes. We grow a combination of winter and spring crops, cereals such as wheat, barley, and oats, and some great crops like oilseed rape and beans. First year students who are completing the level five certificates in agriculture have an option of studying tillage crop husbandry in Kildauten. These students use the tillage enterprise to learn key skills like crop and weed identification, as well as identifying pests and diseases. Most of the crops are within walking distance of the college, so we can assess crop growth and development over the growing season. Okay, welcome back. Um, Claire, there are impressive looking facilities there in, in, in the video, um, but do students get outside the college gate to see what's happening in, the, in industry and, uh, and in other, other farms? Yes, yeah, so as Joe mentioned earlier, when they get to their level six in their second year, we do place an emphasis on trying to expose them to the different elements of the industry. So for this particular course in the machinery and crops industry, so where possible, they complete discussion groups and we bring them off the college farm and onto other farms um, in various scales. We might bring them onto um, a new tillage setup or a young farm or something as simple operation right up to a complex operation with the varying degrees of machinery and crops on them. So we do try to get them off for things like that. We bring them um, to see different machinery factories, different operations. They have um, a foreign study trip as part of it. So this year they went to um, the Lama show over in Birmingham and they also took in factories and farms over there while they were there. So we do try to get them out as much as possible. And as Joe said, we try and bring in guest speakers as well where possible. Okay, just another enterprise related question. What involvement do the, do the tillage students have in, in, in the tillage enterprise? Okay, so at level five, the tillage students are very much learning the basics and they're getting to know what the different crops are and the different weeds and the pests and the diseases. When it gets to second year, really and truly, and this goes for all of the second year courses, we are gearing them up to be the farm managers. They're going to go home, they're going to be making the decisions on their farm. So we get them involved in making the decisions here. So for the machinery and crops, they're out on placement for the first semester. When they come back in after Christmas, we get them making the decisions on what varieties of crops we're going to sow. They have to look up the recommended, the department recommended list, and we get them involved in that. And um, then when it comes to it, they're actually the ones that are going to go out and plow the fields, they're going to sow the crop, they're then going to be involved in making the decisions on what nutrients are going to go on, what sprays are going to go on, and they'll also be involved in putting out some of them um, as well. So we want them making the decisions here. We'd rather see them making a poor decision here and learning from it, and then being capable once they go back to their home farms or go back and work on a farm of making the correct decisions then. Okay. Claire, I want to ask you a few questions about the, the, the full-time course, the part-time course, and the distance education course, all courses that are very important here in Kildalton. Could you explain uh, what the difference is between those courses? Yeah, no problem. So um, as you've probably gathered um, by now, the, what we've been talking about so far have all been full-time courses, level five and six. So essentially, on a normal basis, students are in the college five days a week, these are pretty much your students who after maybe coming out of the Leaving Cert or out of school, they're in here five days a week for two years. We have then what's called our part-time and our distance courses as well, which have become a huge part of the college here in Kildalton. So our part-time courses, as I mentioned earlier on, these are run at night, um, two nights a week over the space of two years. Um, the only stipulation is that you must be over 23 to complete these. So these do tend to suit maybe people um, who are working a lot during the day and can't get any time off. Um, then what we also have is what's referred to our distance course. So this course is essentially for anyone who has a level six degree or qualification or higher in a non-agriculture related area. So we cater for those people. So they come in, they'll have maybe six Saturdays um, throughout their whole course of 18 months where they're in here doing exams. And then there's also on, on a normal basis, there's also 28 um, contact days. So essentially they're in once a month um, but then also we might have some block weeks over the summer where they do skills. It's very much skills that those people are coming in here to do. They're doing a lot of self-learning learning on the theory at home but also they have the backup and support of the tutors here and also of each other and the students that they're learning with. Yeah they get highly engaged in the skills days here as well. They yeah they do. Ahead of them. Yeah, we have the facilities here and we have the facilities to cater for these groups and in a safe environment. Um, so maybe even if some of them 
aren't 100% or the skills are not entirely sure, we have that great small numbers of student to teacher contact when it comes to these courses. Yes. And maybe also to say, Claire, that while they don't have to do placement, they, they do an alternative to placement. Yeah, so these students, um, once they complete the course, they must keep a diary. So while they don't actually have to go out on farms for placements, mm -hmm. they need to um, look at particular farms. So be that the farm that they come from, be that an uncle or an aunt's farm or a nominated farm, and they look at this farm, they go visit it, they see what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what has happened, what's the grass like, what are the crops that have been sown, etc. And they keep a detailed diary um, on these farms. Okay, that's great. That, look, I mean, that's a, it's complicated to explain that, so it's well done on that. But if anybody does have any specific queries, they can, Joe Day is the course coordinator for distance education part-time, James, myself, or Claire, you can contact any of us here in the college. Okay, um, just a few questions here on Zoom. Keep the questions coming in. There's some great questions there. Um, do students do much machinery work like drawing silage or anything like that, Claire? Um, um, so they do a lot of machinery work, I suppose, being that it is a college and students aren't here during the summer of any year. There isn't a lot for students to do when it comes to drawing silage or making the silage. However, in particularly on the machinery and crops course, they are out. They're, um, as I said earlier, they're doing the ploughing, the sowing, and the level five students get an opportunity to do some of that as well when it comes to the winter crops. But every student will be working machinery when they come and do an agriculture course in Kildalton. Okay, and Joe, what types of occupations could I have after this college? Yeah, so um, I suppose uh, for those that uh, look to progress on towards uh, WIT or some of those programs, it might lead more into a, a professional role. There are some students that are quite motivated to come in and do their, their two years in whatever enterprise, and maybe um, they know then they want to put a skill with it, maybe such as um, AI or scanning or something like that, and maybe run a farm part-time. Some students who come in um, thinking they're going to rush home quite often because they do well pretty on second year placement, maybe through a recommendation or through the UCT farm manager course, they might end up in a farm management role. Um, but you'd be surprised how it evolves over time and after five years they couldn't imagine where they've got to compared to where they thought they were going initially. Okay, thanks. And Claire, I'll come back to you with this one. Do we also learn about fixing, maintaining machinery in the other electives? Um, so as part of level five, there is a module um, called tractor maintenance. So as James alluded to earlier on, you do learn in that module about the basic servicing of the tractor, the driving of the tractor. You do different skills in it, like wiring plugs and um, welding, and that is part of it. And when it comes to the level six, there isn't as much machinery in the advanced dairy and advanced dry stocks, but there is when it comes to machinery and cops. So there's a fabrication module where students make um, an item does um, machinery maintenance again at a farm machinery maintenance at a higher level and there's a pr pr production equipment for crops um, where they're involved in it there so it is a very machinery based yeah. um, course the second yeah. year. Another Zoom question for you Claire, what alternative crops do you grow? Okay so as Damien alluded to in the videos and um, while we have a lot of cereal crops we also um, we also sow break crops, so we have oilseed rape, we have beans, and we also have some maize um, as well. So there are the different crops um, that we grow and that we're able to bring students out to see, along with we have the Department of Agriculture trials are all located here in Kildalton, which is a fantastic resource um, to be able to bring students out and to see the different varieties that are grown and the different um, maybe disease spores on them. Yeah, I'll keep the questions coming in there on, on Zoom. There's some very good questions. And we'll I suppose them. just to add though, Tim, while we grow those crops, <coughs> we also teach about other crops maybe that we don't particularly grow. So for example, potatoes and different things like that. So we have resources outside of the college that we can go to visit as well. I also think it's important, Tim and Claire and Joe, just to, to recognise the fact that we uh, are farming in a sustainable, friendly manner as well. And uh, I, think, uh, I think our use of... Uh, protected urea and uh, I know Joe you were involved in the, the hedgerows so you might explain that would you? Yes yeah, so I suppose there's been a uh, big initiative since this spring to try and uh, put in over 500 meters a year for the next two years of um, native hedgerow species in areas where there might have been hedges taken out over a number of years and also there's a plan in place um, starting this spring uh, spreading over two years looking at putting in some broadleaf tree species again native to the area and potentially native to the farm itself once upon a time as part of a broader uh, drive towards both sustainability and um, biodiversity in the farm. 
So again, there'll be an increase in, in um, grass margins, um, increase in buffer zones, and an increase in the, certainly, I know the, in the hill field areas you come in and the, uh, where predominantly the cereals are grown, and the, the, some of those um, boundaries have come alive in the last three weeks in particular. So between that, as well as an emphasis on using the trailing shoe, which purely from a production point of view, we're a big fan of, and um, there's a lot going on here. I know uh, I, I opened up with those, and Tim has asked me about the EBI, and we know that the EBI, the high EBI cows, the efficient animal, and like we've been pushing EBI in the college, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's sustainable as well. Plus the fact that uh, in the beef side things, they've been pushing Eurostars as well, haven't they? Yeah, yeah? absolutely. So yeah. I think in the, in the, in the most recent uh, reports generated in ICBF there, um, we're at uh, 113 euro for the, the top 10% the cutoff is 108 euro. So I suppose it's a testament to good decision making by those managing the unit. And the incorporation of clover into the, particularly yeah. the dairy swarts here as well, it's, it's, it's one of the, the key traits that we've yeah. looked at under sustainability. Yeah. I okay. suppose in relation to that on the tillage side of things, we have a lot of technology then yeah. that we're using on the tractors. We have the most up-to-date tractors for students to use when it comes to tillage. So be that your GPS, or be it your nitrogen sensor that does cut down on waste then as well. I want to bring you back to some of the, um, uh, 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 of the Zoom questions here. Um, I didn't complete the leaving cert. Can I do the level five part-time, Claire? Yes, you can. You can do the level five um, part-time if you didn't complete the leaving cert. The only stipulation for that level five part-time course is you must be over 23. So anyone who's over 23, can apply to do the level five part-time course and well, they can also do the level yeah. five the day course as well the full-time course i think i'd like to be capturing him you know i think uh, if he'd, he'd be he'd be a big asset onto the full-time course so or she sorry uh, she would be a big full-time asset yeah. onto the depending course. on their situation yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay and claire again if i do the distance education would i be eligible for the same schemes as a full-time student very good question yeah excellent question so if no matter what of the three courses that we've mm -hmm. been speaking about here tonight once you get your level six in those you will meet the requirements for the department of agriculture to get the schemes and the basic payments and the tans mm -hmm. etc and depending on your age you will be qualified as a young trained farmer and will get all the benefits that go with it Okay, um, at this stage, James, you might talk us through the application procedure for people who, who haven't, haven't applied for the course. Um, okay, Tim, yeah. Um, I did, first of all, you have to go into www.chavis.ie and you see in the top right hand corner then is apply online. So once you click on that, you will be given uh, the courses. So agriculture will be there, um, horticulture will be there, equine will be there. So again, you pick on your course choice. And like, uh, oh, as Kildartum, I know this is agriculture, but we are, and overall, we do embrace the other uh, courses that are on, other programs on here. So while I am very much keen on you going agriculture, at the same time, I want you to keep you in Kildartum. So why not, if agriculture is not your first choice, go with why not horticulture as well. So in this case, www.chavis.ie, apply online, and then click agriculture. And sooner than go to another college, click horticulture here, or click equine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just on that, while James is referring to the online application, if for people that might be interested in applying to the part-time or distance courses, just to keep an eye on the Kildallan College Facebook page, it alerts you to when we are opening up for applications. And again, it will be through the exact same method to Chagas that each through the online application process there. Great. I have a few more Zoom questions here I want to, I want to get through. Um, is there modules on organic crops, um, James? Um, yeah, our organic is part of, as, as Claire would have said, we would look at on the principles of agriculture, but there is organic uh, throughout its, its, its sections and its chapters of modules out there. So while there is not a specific heart or um, organic module, we do make reference to it in most modules. Okay. Uh, Joe, do we also get to learn how to financially manage a farm? Well, it would be really important. So in first year in the level five or around the programs, part-time, distance or full-time here, and there will be uh, farm business technologies, which would be basic, I suppose, um, bookkeeping, record keeping skills. But in second year of the program, it, it would come down to doing a farm plan. And, and one of those documents required by Reading Department of Agriculture is my farm, my plan. And it's, a, a, I suppose, projecting forward based on changes you're making. So, um, and as, as, as with the organics, I'd say there's financial management, analysis, record keeping, and decision making factored into the husbandry modules like beef, dairy, sheep, and, and crops as well. So, particularly in second year, we throw it back to the student like to be able to analyze something, to be able to make decisions uh, on something, and uh, finance be part of that. Joe, I'll, I'll ask you this question as well. What are the living quarters like for people staying and what activities is there to do? You've touched a little bit on the activities, but maybe yeah. briefly go through it. So look, uh, I suppose we, we've just over um, 80 um, bedroom units there uh, spread across three floors. 
um, with, within the, I suppose, adjoining the main building, the teaching building here within Kildalton. Um, you're very much within a campus. You're not at the, the side of the street, so your 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 car is safe. You are safe. Your belongings are safe within a, within a single room unit. And um, we have very good catering facilities here in terms of breakfast, dinner, and tea. And for those parents that might be concerned about the financial management ability of a student coming in, you can actually use a buy credit ahead in terms of meals um, to put yourself in ease for the first couple of weeks as a student would bed in here. Um, and again, it would be really important for students coming in um, that they would engage with other students in some of the activities that my, my colleagues have put on for them in the first month or two to help them settle into the campus. Plus, they're all single bedrooms as well, yeah. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, James, this one for you. How many exams are there to complete throughout the two years? The hard question. <laughs> um, look, um, we, we, we start in September in first year with putting on, um, of the 11 modules, we put on something like seven or eight of those. Once a module is completed, we don't allow exams to uh, wait till the end of term. We will, we will put on exam results, or exam, sorry, once the module is completed. In second year, we, you will find that there will be a focus on end of term exams. But um, uh, for particularly a first year, um, as we said again, we said this practical. You will you will have practical exams. There will be practical exams just before we break up for Christmas, and there will be practical exams just before you break up for your second placement. But the majority of the exams will follow kind of as you finish the module. We will put on the exam. And Claire, briefly on this one, is poetry only an introduction, or is there a specific course on it? Um, so while it's it's an introduction um, here in the college, so it does go through um, laying hens and then it does go through um, actually poultry meat production as well. Um, but here in the college, it is very much, in Kildalton, it is very much just an introductory um, to poultry. I suppose in the part of the country mm -hmm. we're in, it, it's not a huge, um, there's not a huge demand for courses mm -hmm. in relation to it, but there is other courses. Um, that do focus on poetry. So trip. somebody looking for a specific poetry course, they're probably looking at Ballyhays yeah, and Yeah, and Ballyhays are the poetry more, course, correct. Right. Yeah. Um, will there be accommodation available in the first year placement? So I think this is this is accommodation on, on, on farm, farm for somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, generally, what, we, what, what our placement officer does is impose a 15 kilometre distance between your home farm and the host farm or the placement farm. So the majority of 17, 18 year olds now are all driving at this stage. So maybe accommodation can be provided for maybe 20% of students, but um, an awful lot of the students don't favor accommodation on the farms and we don't enforce it. Okay. Um, and James, I'll keep going with you on this. Are there any leaving cert requirements to reach for the courses, such as a grade, uh, a certain grade in maths? Okay. Um, <clears throat> The, the only real requirement of getting into first year certificate in agriculture is you are 17 by January 2021. Okay, so 17 by January 2021. So that automatically tells you that you don't need the uh, leave insert. I would encourage all of you to do the leave insert. Um, if you're looking at leave insert subjects, I think maths are very important, agricultural science are very important, but also you will be doing exams, so your English is very important as well. So um, it's, it's important that you have high grades in these. And in the, uh, if, if uh, we are back to normal uh, by September, which hopefully we will, we will, uh, we will be looking at, and we'll be assessing every student on their writing ability, their reading ability, and that will all go uh, to the access officer. Okay, Joe, um, another question coming up here on Zoom. Uh, when put on farm placement in first year, if the farm is a long distance away, will diesel be paid for um, a travel expense? Yeah, so I suppose the, the, uh, once, once the placement officer um, would allocate you to a farm, having discussed which of the enterprises you're interested in and the modules you're doing, um, the student actually does an interview with the farmer, with the host farmer, before they ever actually go working there. And as a result, um, things like um, hours, uh, pay, whether uh, overtime will be required or is necessary, all those things are earned out of that meeting. So if a person is going a, a, a very long distance altogether, then the agreement is made up front, but certainly there's no requirement to use their own car while on placement, as in between farms. And uh, uh, quite often, um, an arrangement might be made in lieu of either food or fuel, depending on the individual situation. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. James, a very brief closing remark before I conclude the session. Okay, thanks, Tim, and thanks to all my colleagues here. Um, we're a vibrant community, we're a, vi a vibrant agricultural college, we're a vibrant horticultural college and a vibrant equine college. We need you as a student to apply for Kildalton. Uh, we want you to uh, apply and have your application as soon as possible as already stated, www.chogas.ie and apply online. 
and we look forward to seeing you and we will welcome seeing you next September. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much for your questions. Um, we got through them all. Okay, a recording of this presentation will be put up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, so if any of your colleagues didn't get to see it, they will find it on the Chagas YouTube channel. Um, we got to cover all the questions, but if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, James, Joe or Claire, and we, we, will, we will come back to you and answer those questions for you. And uh, look, we're looking forward to meeting you in September and thank you and good night.